Hey y'all, thanks for joining me today. I wanted to show you this really cool and simple idea that you can use in drop D to play these really cool blues grooves. And there's not really that much that you have to memorize, but with some simple variations, you can play around with this type of stuff for a really, really long time. And it gives you so many different ideas for improvisation or new ideas for just fooling around. It's kind of like noodling, but also songwriting at the same time. We're gonna do this lesson on four different levels. So no matter where you are in your playing, you'll have something that you can take from this and start to expand upon it. Since it's in drop D, the first thing you gotta do is get your guitar in drop D. And the fastest way to do that is to play your D string and then play your low E string while the D string is ringing. So I'll do that again. So you play the D string and then play the E string and then drop it down while both are playing. And then you can really hear when, it, when it's in pitch, right? Of course, it's not a bad idea to check again with your tuner if you got one. But All right, so first off, you wanna get that thumb going like this. Keep that groove with the thumb. That's the most important thing. And then we wanna add some notes on top like this. And I'll show you what these notes are in a moment, but this is just an overview of what it'll sound like. Three, four. Kind of an overview there's some other parts that we can add to it as well so check it out once you've got this thumb going like this what we need to know is what notes can we add to that and basically what we're doing is we're just adding the minor pentatonic scale the d minor pentatonic it's like this play it along with me it goes like this Notice at first, you just gotta pluck the notes together. Meaning every time your thumb goes, you pluck with a finger to get the melody note out. And practice that for a moment just to get used to the scale. Once you've memorized the scale, then see if you can add some syncopation, which just means adding Syncopation means we're playing in between the thumbs. So notice instead of going together, 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 we're going in between. And it's a simple concept, right? It seems easy enough to do, but it takes a little bit of practice to get used to that feeling. And then once you can do that, try to see if you can mix them back and forth. Right, landing on that D note, D. And then you can even go higher up in the scale like this. That brings us to our next point, call and response. Response. Now, let me tell you, so call and response just means you play a call phrase that's one thing and it could be anything. And then you respond with something else that's something else. <laughs> it's as simple as that. What we're doing for call and response here is we're playing maybe one or two measures of kind of riffing. And then we're responding with chords on that D. And that's one of the tricks in drop D is these chords are so easy to play because they're just straight across. You just, if you can just use one finger to flatten, maybe just catch two low strings or at most three. When I play it, I like to use not only my first finger, but sometimes my second finger, maybe even multiple fingers, pinky like that. Feel around what feels comfortable for you. That's the right choice. Whatever feels most comfortable is gonna work for you. So an easy way for you to phrase this is to take three measures of call phrases, meaning just riffing, just noodle around while you're keeping this thing going.
and then answer. Three, four, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Notice I'm not filling in every available space with melody notes. Sometimes I'm playing a short phrase and landing on those root notes and then answering with that response phrase. So that just by itself can get you a long way. Look at some different response phrases. We could go, or we could go, or we could go, or we could even go. Oh, there's so many options. Those are the different spots that I'd recommend to play. Oh, three, five, seven, ten, twelve. Let's see if I can do some phrases kind of coming all the way up to ten and twelve. When you're grooving around and you start getting bored, just single notes, try to be more aggressive with the right hand fingers coming up so you can play double stops or even three string chords. Now, when you play in these chords, there's a couple notes that you want to try to avoid. The cool thing is if you leave this finger down and this finger down is kind of a skeleton, Then when you're strumming those, notice all those chords sound pretty cool, right? So you don't have to worry about what chord they are. It's just kind of a harmony of a D7 chord, basically. So even if you lift one of these fingers temporarily, still sounds pretty cool. There's all these really cool harmonies. But try to remember to come back to this shape and then especially this big old D, pretty much power chord shape. What do you do when you get bored with just doing all that stuff, even though there's a bunch of variations here. Everything that we're doing so far is just basically a one chord groove call and response. But a lot of times you might want to add a second or third chord in there. I think the second chord you should add is like a G chord. So let's take a look at how you can get into that. So first, right, we're playing this phrase. So you're playing that phrase, and then we go up to the G. So you just slide up the G with a third finger. And then back to the D. So let me slow that down. When you slide up to here, the third finger, it leaves this first finger available to play these notes. Vary those is exactly the same way that we varied with the D. After you've played that for a couple bars, then go back to your D. And that gives you a really cool variation to play. What if you want one more cool chord to play? Well, so everything you already know in A works because it's just starting on this A string root. So you play A7 for a moment. Back to 
the G back to the D. Check out that A. And that's how you can mix a bunch of stuff together so that it sounds like you know what you're doing. So hopefully these tips helped out. I wanna give you one last tip before we close off. One of the hardest things that y'all are gonna encounter is keeping this thumb going the whole time. And now that deserves several lessons on its own. The basic idea is to start with that. A lot of times people start with and then trying to add the bass underneath is basically just means you kind of have to start over. So what I recommend instead is to start off going Start like pinching those notes together with your thumb until that feels easy enough to start doing the syncopation, meaning in between. And then one last tip is instead of thinking of the thumb movement by itself, which I see almost all my students when they're starting, will start just thinking that the thumb moves by itself. It's really kind of an arm. You know, it's almost like you're doing a down strum. Notice how much my whole arm is moving. And then lastly, don't baby these notes. What I mean by that is give it a lot of effort. Give it a lot of energy. When I hear my students play, I wanna hear that someti sometimes. Not all the time, but I like that powerful buzz, you know, that almost always like classical players and pop and country stuff, a lot of times they're trying to avoid that. But in blues, that tells the audience, this is a powerful note. It's even more powerful than my guitar can take. It's got to buzz it out. All right, so have some fun with that. Let me know how it goes in the comments. And if you like lessons like this, please let me know and I can make a lot more like this because these are fun to make. So thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to support the channel, join FGA members where you can get tabs to every single one of my lessons that I teach on YouTube. And that really helps support me and helps support the channel. So thanks so much in advance and I'll see you guys on the next one.